Well, first of all, I'm surprised my picture is not up on the wall anywhere in here. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, we're, we're, we're totally excited um, about being here and being a part of uh, the Sweet 16. Uh, had two games that we really had to compete and play at a high level. Um, excited about the challenge um, of, of playing uh, tomorrow night. Have incredible respect for, for Gonzaga, obviously. And, um, you know, we've got one more day of prep the rest of the afternoon, and, and, then, uh, and then we're playing. Questions? We'll go up here in the middle first. Hey, Coach, I think back to some of the handwritten letters that you shared with us from your mom from some different games since you've coached at Arkansas. And now that she's going to be here in person and see you coach the Razorbacks for the first time, do you anticipate a little one-on-one -on -one chalk talk with her? Hopefully not at halftime. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it'll be really cool to, uh, to coach a game um, in, fr in front of my mom. She was able to come to, a, obviously, games when, in Sacramento and here, living in San Diego. But it has not been the case to get to Fayetteville. And, and so I'm looking forward to she's flying in today. And uh, it'll be awesome to be able to coach in front of her. And my son's flying up with her from San Diego. So um, that's a really cool personal thing, although it's, you know, it's, it's way more about the, the players and student athletes and their experience at playing in a Sweet 16. And then obviously a, a lot of attention put on Holmgren and Timmy. But I'm curious your thoughts on Gonzaga's backcourt and, and the impact they've made this season. Yeah, there's, it, <laughs> it, we can't just focus on one, obviously. You know, their point guard, Nebenhard, is I mean, he's such a special player. He's got great size. We played against him at Nevada when he was uh, at Florida. We actually recruited him hard when he transferred. Um, he's got great court vision. He does a great job of catching deep, long outlet passes. He's incredible pitch-ahead passes to shooters like Bolton on the wing. Um, Gonzaga just presents a lot of problems, um, and that's why they're uh, – being talked about as far as being a team that's going to advance beyond this. There has not been much talk about Arkansas, um, which they deserve it. They're the number one ranked team in this tournament. And so uh, we have to play our A game to beat a team that, um, that's seated number one in the entire field. We'll go over here. Please remember to state your name and affiliation when you ask Coach a question. Okay. Hey, Eric. I'm Bob Holt, the Arkansas Democrat Gazette. I think you know that, though. I hope your shoulder's feeling better. Hey, I know we've talked about this before, but you had such an amicable parting from the Warriors. I just wondered if you could, and it seemed the people there still talk very highly of you. Why, why, why was your parting so amicable? Why do you have such a good feeling about the Warriors? And then how much a better a coach, as good as you were then, how much better do you think you are now? How have you evolved as a coach? Well, I know I'm a lot better. I, I probably knew one one hundredth of what I know now. Um, but just the experience in the Bay Area, the crowds, uh, you know, for the Warriors even then, um, when we were a non-playoff team, was incredible. Um, af you know, after I got uh, fired from Sacramento, I came right back here uh, to be a dad and, and live in Danville. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny, but I would go to 24-hour fitness in San Ramon and, and wear my Warriors gear, even though I had been, you know, let go a few years before. Um, Raymond Ritter, Eric Hausen, a lot of the people that, that are new even, you know, I'm friends with. And I just have a, you know, whenever there's management change in the NBA, you know, fortunately for me, I got to live it with my father. Um, and so... You know, there was management change, and then soon to follow is, is going to be the coach. And uh, I still talk to Gary St. Jean, actually one of the houses we bought in Danville. Um, his wife, MJ, sold it to us. Um, even though Chris Mullen was the, the one that took over for, for Gary St. Jean, our sons were always playing against each other in AAU ball. Uh, my youngest son, Matthew, at the University of San Diego, that's where Mully's daughter um, went. They first year, their freshman year, they hung out all the time. Um, so I, you know, I think just understanding that, you know, maybe it wasn't completely the, you know, the ones, the wins and losses and, and there was new management and they wanted new direction. Um, but certainly the first year with the Warriors is, you know, is gratifying coaching that I've had. I had fun, loved the guys, although there was 
when Gilbert uh, Arenas is young, there's always going to be, you know, some, some wacky stuff going on. Uh, but it was a great experience, and I feel fortunate to, you know, to have coached an NBA team at such a young age. Question from Jeff in the middle. Yeah, Jeff Ferrado with the San Jose Mercury News. Eric, sort of following up on that, just can you talk about what it's like for you to be able to come back to the Bay Area? Uh, I think it's really, Jeff, it's, it's, real, it's difficult with tickets. Um, <laughs> one of my cousins, Chris Anderson, that I gr basically grew up with, he's been one of my best friends when I had to send him the link um, to the Arkansas ticket office, and he's like, what are you talking about? I, I'm not one of the guys that just gets a ticket from you. Um, it's been really cool. Uh, I have you know, a bunch of people coming to the hotel later this afternoon, and we have downtime at 4 o'clock today. Um, just so many friends. I mean, it's, it's uh, to come back and be able to, to play here is, you know, the day that I was either fired from the Kings or the Warriors to think that I would be coaching in a Sweet 16 in the Bay Area. If anybody would have asked me that at that particular time, I would have told them there was zero chance, not 5%, not 10%, but literally zero chance of that happening. Um, but I guess, you know, the world has a funny way of, of working itself out. And um, it's, it's a cool experience for my whole family, especially my two sons. Question from Janie up here in the front. Hi, Eric Cheney McCauley from AP. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, how'd you get your hands on all those hats? Did you have an assist from an equipment guy, maybe somebody almost as great as Eric Housen, to, to get your hands on all those hats that you had the kids wear? And what, what sort of sparked that um, idea? Yeah, I can't divulge my resources. Um, but we, uh, you know, when we went to Buffalo, um, I wanted to talk to the guys about you know, some of the stuff, like we went to Niagara Falls and obviously I went to the Bills facility and, and um, we actually talked about, you know, NHL hockey when we were in Buffalo. Um, we talked about a particular goalie that played there. Just trying to have fun, educate the guys. Um, some, <laughs> one of the players didn't, didn't know that, that the Oakland baseball team was actually called the Athletics and wanted to know what that meant and how it turned into the A's. Um, so I went into a history lesson about Charlie Finley and went into a history lesson about the uniforms and the colors and Billy Martin managing them. I, I don't know if they listened or heard anything I said, but I think that's part of, part of our job is, you know, we're going to have a little tour later today of the city and get on a trolley, and I think that's part of the experience. And, and I, you know, I've said it in, in past interviews, it also helps me from overloading them. Um, if we're touring the city, it, it's one less film session, one less putting pressure on the guys. Um, and so I think it's healthy for us to, to be able to do stuff like that. Question to the right here. Uh, Austin Getz, KQ TV. Uh, very few teams have played as well in one half as Memphis did in their first half game against Gonzaga. Is that a set of film that you put an extra eye on or maybe pick up something that they were trying to do for, for success against your matchup with them? Yeah, I mean, it's certainly we've watched, um, you know, not just, uh, you know, Gonzaga's first two games, uh, but we've watched a lot of games, talked to a lot of people on the phone. Um, you know, weirdly enough, uh, I went to San Diego, which is in the same conference, and so I watch this conference whenever I can. And <laughs> if they're ever on TV, it's always Gonzaga. It's not San Diego, Santa Clara, I promise you that. So Gonzaga's always on playing somebody in that conference, and so I've seen them play throughout the year a lot. Um, but, you know, what Memphis, every team's got, got different strengths and weaknesses, and we saw what Memphis did, but, but they, they, like I said, have a little bit different personnel than us. And every game takes on a different theme and has its own storyline. So I don't think that we can actually, other than looking at a few things and maybe changing a few wrinkles on things, which we've tried to do, um, we got to kind of be who we are, too. Question on the left. Hey, Eric, Scotty Borderline with WholeHogSports.com. Uh, you guys' transition defense was pretty solid in Buffalo, but given the pace that, I guess, Gonzaga plays, where do you kind of place the importance of getting back defensively, communicating, and, and doing your best not to get cross-matched? 
Well, Scotty, it can't be pretty good. Um, it better be great or we have no chance. Um, the pace that they play at's incredible. Their wings run hard. They got a rim runner. They got a great trail guy. Um, so all those factors become important. You have to guard the three-point line on the catch, maybe before the catch because of the pitch ahead, because of the deep outlets. Um, you know, you got to be physical on the rim runs. You got to be physical on the trail man. Um, so there's a lot of important factors. Um, communication becomes really important for any team that runs and any team that plays with great pace. Um, you know, point and pick and finding your man uh, because it becomes of the utmost importance. There's always going to be cross matches whenever you play a team that runs like they do, um, which puts a further importance on the defensive communication. Go to the right over here. Brenna Green, Crum 2 News. Uh, Coach Musselman, you talked about the fact that not a lot of people are, are talking about you guys in terms of this matchup. Do you talk to your team about that? Do you kind of let them marinate in it? Just what are your thoughts there? Yeah, they're going to hear us, you know, when we do a film session. Um, there's stuff spliced in on what people have said, 1,000%. I don't mind, you know, conveying that. Um, we understand the respect factor for, for us in this particular game is kind of non-existent from a national perspective. Um, so yeah, our guys are going to see it, hear it, all the way up until tip-off. Um, again, the, the respect that we have for Gonzaga is through the roof, but um, you know, we have a 40-minute game that we've got to try to figure out how we can um, play with them and give ourselves an opportunity. Question on the left. Uh, Coach Steve Sullivan with KTV. Uh, do you sit down dreaming, thinking that one day this team's going to just light it up shooting as, you know, to the point where you really struggle, but you do enough to win, but there's going to be that day that they aren't this kind of poor shooting team? I just dream we make one sometimes. Um, but we, you know, we've, you know, for us right now, uh, toughness, defense, and really we've made shots when we've had to. It's been a really, uh, unique team in that aspect that when we need to go on a 6-0 scoring spurt and make two deep threes, we've kind of found a way to do that. Obviously, being 17-3 and in our last 20 games, and you look at the competition that we've played against, when you play against, you know, Kentucky and Auburn and, and at Tennessee and at Alabama, and, and two of the three losses have come by a combined five points. I mean, we've talked all year to our team about, you know, how do you win the race from November to March? Meaning, how do you win the race of being an improved basketball team? And I think we've improved and won that race as much as anybody based on who we've played um, down the stretch of the season. Um, and, and now it's a 40-minute game, and certainly making shots, Sully, becomes extremely important, not just for us, but but. But every team in, this, in the tournament that's left is you've got to have shot-making ability in order to advance when, you, when, you, when, you get, when you're down to 16 teams. Got time for three more questions. We'll go to the back middle first. Uh, Dana O'Neill at The Athletic. Must you're talking about kind of the touring and having some fun with your players. A lot of coaches come in here and talk about this should be a business trip and yada, yada, yada. Do you look at this... Is that a you decision, how you would treat any team, or do you do that specific to this team because it will work for them to kind of ease off the pedal a little bit? Yeah, Danny, I'd do it based on experience. Um, if anybody thinks that they sit up here and say it's a business trip and that they think they're preparing more than us, watching more film than us, or have a more intense practice session than us, then they're fooling themselves. Um, nobody prepares harder than what we do. Um, and, and more importantly than our players do. Um, you could quiz them on anything, and they, they know every opponent inside out. They know every option offensively that a team's going to run. It doesn't mean that we can stop them. Um, but through experience at Nevada, I thought I put way too much pressure on our team um, the last year. I look back at it. I regret it. We didn't celebrate wins. Um, we were ranked in the top 10 for 17 straight weeks. Um, we got to the NCAA tournament and played Florida, and I, I thought that, you know, one of the most regrettable years I've ever had. Um, I tell the Martin twins that all the time. I wish we would have had more fun. I wish we would have embraced being in the tournament. My wife reminds me all the time, because I would come home after 
after wins and, and be miserable uh, because we only won by 10 points and our fans thought we should have won by 15. And uh, this team has had an incredible year. Um, so we are going to celebrate. We are going to ha- make it a business trip as well. But while we're doing it, um, we're going to make it enjoyable as well. Again, just based, based off experience. Last two questions. We'll go to Joe up front and then Ron. You already uh, touched on some of the emotion of being back here, but uh, how aware are people that there's a, a state championship in, in your family as well from this part of the world? Well, Joe, it's, I mean, I, just to look out and see so many familiar faces like you is, is after a lot of years. Is, but, yeah, there is a state championship in the family with, uh, with Michael Musselman um, and Monta Vista winning um, a huge game and obviously Matthew playing it. Monta Vista and, and like I mentioned, you know, the, the familiarity with, with Mully's kids being a part of it. And, um, you know, I spent three years starting an AAU program um, and those same kids that won that state championship, I had them from sixth, seventh and eighth grade. Um, so really, really cool experience to be able to go out. Um, after being a two-time NBA head coach, I, which my wife said I thought I married an NBA coach and she's retrieving basketballs at Sycamore Park for sixth graders. I don't think that when we got married, she thought that that was going to be in the cards for her, but I would never trade um, hanging out, you know, with my sons on a, you know, on a daily basis and then coach, being able to coach them. And the funniest story of that, we were 71 and 0, um, and we lost a game against the Sacramento Yellow Jackets. And I looked at the uh, father who was my assistant coach, Dean Salinas, uh, when we lost that game in Sacramento. And I said, that's the last time I'm coaching an AAU game. And that's a true story. We lost a game, and that was it. I never coached that group of guys, of young men again. Good to see you. Last one to Ron. Hi, Eric. Ron Krejcik from the San Francisco Chronicle. Good to see you. Good to see you, Ron. Um, have you ever been in this building, first of all? And, and then, unrelated question, what did you learn about yourself as a coach last year with that Elite Eight run? Yeah, I've never been in the building. Um, I told our team, this is probably, as we walked in, this is probably the best arena in the world. Um, you know, I was able to obviously went in the weight room uh, behind us. Um, I've looked at suites with our athletic director. Um, I mean, this building, it plays incredible on TV when you're, when you're watching a game. Um, I'm sure the enthusiasm in the building tomorrow will be, you know, maybe unmatched from, from a tournament standpoint. The, you know, the, uh, everything about this place is insanely positive. Um, and then as far as what I've learned, you know, from last year, um, you know, last year was the same type. You know, if you look at the timeline of our particular team, uh, we, got, we got blown out at, at, uh, at LSU. We had incredible two practices before we went to Alabama probably based on our practices. We got blown out at Alabama, but it was kind of a turning point for us. And starting off conference play 0-3, it was the same thing, you know. And uh, we were able to kind of regroup um, and tell our team that, you know, last year we kept talking about, you know, we felt we could be a Final Four team, and, and we still feel that way. I mean, if I, if I talked to Moses Moody, uh, he'd probably say if we didn't play Baylor, you know, we might have still been playing. And we played Baylor um, better than anybody in the tournament last year. If you, if you look at the 40-minute game that we played against Baylor, nobody came close to the way that we played against them. Um, we just ran into a team that was better than us. And, and we ran into a team that last year was the best team in the country. And you look at the teams that are here right now, I mean, the three teams take away us, all three of them could win a national championship. That's how good this particular um, pod is or region, whatever. Um, I mean, these three teams are really, really good, um, which is why it's going to be awesome for the fans here to, to watch the level of competition that's here. So 
It's that time of year as college basketball takes center stage with the tournament finally upon us. If you're looking to wager this year, Bet Online is the number one spot for all your updated odds and info, along with great contests, including the bracket contest, where you can have a chance to take home the top prize. Head over to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE to get started. That's B L E A V. Bet Online is your continued source for all your sports wagering needs, including live betting and your favorite Vegas casino games. Bet online, where the game starts.